Hey everyone's Jekyll Wolf back in Sky Factory 4 with something different, something new. Uh, this is five things I wish I had known about Sky Factory 4 uh, before I started playing it. So I've played an awful lot of modded, you know, Minecraft packs and, you know, th there are a ton of different, you know, mods out there and they all operate a little bit differently in each pack. And, you know, learning them can be you know, a little bit of a trial sometimes. So trial and error is a big part of everything I do uh, in my tutorial videos, you know, before I send them out to you. Uh, but there are a lot of things that I've learned after the fact that I think I, you know, really wish I'd, you know, known the first time around. So uh, here are five things I wish I'd known about <laughs> my, my uh, uh, Sky Factory 4 uh, before I had started it. I'm going to have to fix that hole here. Number one. So the first thing I wish I had known, you know, in Sky Factory 4 was the importance of your choice of early game, early storage. So I stuck with the, you know, these rustic cabinets and chests, you know, and even the, uh, the item crates way longer than I should have. I think these are really, really good. And you have to kind of pick one of these, you know, to start with. But, uh, at the end of the day, your best bet is to move up to these filing cabinets as soon as possible. Now they are a little bit more complicated to make than you know the the, the chests and the the cabinets and all of that uh, because they do require a bunch of iron but once you get to them i highly highly recommend uh, that you switch to them and to the file folders simply because the file folders are infinite storage for each item whereas all of these have a finite amount of storage now, why is this important? You may think that this storage method is going to be enough for you in the future. I am going to tell you right now, it will not be. You are going to wish that you had all of these resources, you know, growing from as early as possible and not basically being voided or wasted or, you know, gotten rid of because there will come a time when you need a absolute ton of stuff and you are not going to have it and you're going to have to manually get it for yourself. So I've had this chest running for a little while. You can see it is slowly filling up with stuff, but at some point it's going to get full and it's going to get full of junk that I don't really need and it's going to get jammed up and it's not going to be super, super efficient. The same thing with the cabinets, though. The reason you probably want to do the cabinets over the chests is the cabinets are stackable. You know, they are not much more complicated to make than a regular vanilla chest. You just need that wooden trap door. Uh, but the cabinets are stackable if you place the one on the bottom first. Uh, if you place the top one first and then try to make it uh, connect to the bottom one, it does not work that way. Uh, it has got to be bottom to top. Oh, Sorry, uh, it's got to be bottom to top. If you click on the side there, it's not going to work either. But uh, this gives you double storage vertically, which is really, really cool. Uh, but these, again, are only good early, early, early on. As soon as you get that iron, you should be switching up to these filing cabinets. Uh, one of the reasons is, you know, they are fairly cheap. You know, again, iron is, you know, one of the first things you're going to be working towards uh, in Sky Factory 4. So you should be trying to get to it really, really quick. Uh, other than that, the, the main ingredient is going to be, you know, uh, sugar cane uh, to make your paper. And, you know, once you get your snad going on and if we go switch myself into survival, we can go grab that sugar cane and we have to break that uh, item frame. Uh, but then, you know, we can manually grow sugar cane just on the snad there, just by flicking that switch on and off. And, you know, it's a very, very easy resource to get. And so it's getting these file folders are really, really simple. Now, one thing you do have to do is you do have to prime each file folder for the item that you want. So that's very simple. You just put the item that you want into the file folder. You can take it out and, you know, then you can interact. You can actually use these to build in your world with that item that is really well and good if you need to take out more to you know you use it to craft or something like that all you're going to do is throw that file folder back in your your you know inventory and then you can pull out whatever ones that you want so that is really really good this is a little bit of a visual glitch that sometimes happens when you leave your drawers open uh not a big deal but it tells you what's in there anyways uh, the other good thing about uh, the file folders is that, you know, you can hover over the filing cabinet. It tells you how much of each file folder is in there, which is really good for knowing how much uh, resources you've got. And you can see how quickly, you know, you are gaining that resource. So if we go and take a, a say, a dirt sapling. Now I've got this on the blue mulch, which is the best mulch. So this is going to grow really, really quick. Uh, but it is super, super uh, good at letting us know exactly, you know, how things are growing there. So that is growing up really, really quick. Uh, 
Now, getting access to these, you know, is a little bit of a pain. Uh, so your next best step is to set up, set up to a simple uh, storage network. I knew that I started one of these, you know, way, way earlier uh, than I even did the filing cabinet. So uh, this is not the tip, but it is something that you should really, really think about. Uh, basically, all you've got to do is hook up your simple storage network uh, with a storage link cable to your, you know, filing cabinet, and then you can access through it to your request table. Uh, and you can also use your remote for that as well. So filing cabinets are definitely my number one thing that I wish I had known early on when I was first started playing Sky Factory 4. Number two. So my second thing that I wish I'd known uh, earlier on in uh, Sky Factory 4 uh, is the watering can trick. Now, this was something that uh, was shared with me in the comment section on one of my videos, and I've spent like an hour trying to find that video and that comment so I could shout out that person. I know I've shouted them out earlier on uh, in the series, but I just, I cannot find that name. So I apologize. This is not my discovery. This is discovered by somebody else. I t do not take credit for this uh, at all, but uh, the water watering can trick is basically done with your standard uh, watering can. So to make a watering can, it's just the four uh, ing or iron ingots, the water bucket and the bone meal. And if we took one of them, we can kind of go up to our little farm area, shift and then right click and we kind of automatically start growing stuff. And this, this works pretty, pretty good. This is actually pretty quick uh, for everything that's going on here. So that is really, really good. So we're going to shift, turn that off. And now we're going to go, let's go and clean up all of this mess. So I've cleaned up the garden. I've got my one watering can in my hand. Normally, if you try to do this with two watering cans in your hand, it's going to say, give you that error down at the bottom, uh, cannot activate with more than one watering can in your inventory. So that is, you know, as the game is meant to be function, you know, played. Uh, if we go put that one of those watering cans back, take this watering can, throw it in our off hand, you know, shift, right click. So it is active now. And then we go and sneak these other guys. You can actually see the wheat growing uh, in that top corner behind me there. It's, I'm just pointing at it enough uh, that it's actually still activating. But we've thrown those other watering cans in our hand, already activated, and then, you know, it's significantly faster. Like, the just by itself was fast, but this is like really, really super, super fast. And we can right click still harvest up all this stuff on our own. And it's basically growing almost as fast as we can, you know, harvest it, which is really, really good. We can just look at one spot and just hold down our right, you know, mouse button. And this will just automatically do it, you know, one block, but one block isn't super, super efficient. You can do this with multiple blocks. You know, this works so well. Like we've only been doing this for just a short amount of time. And I've got almost, you know, 42. I actually got rid of all of my um, inventory uh, before I uh, started the second set here. Uh, so there's none from that original one that we did. So we should pretty much have a, say a stack. We got over a stack of wheat already. So super, super quick. Uh, you can pretty much put a full inventory in there. You don't really need a full inventory. I was just kind of, you know, overdoing it here, but this is a really, really cool trick to kind of, you know, increase your, uh, farming capacity, you know, manually, you know, you could, you could do other things as well to do it, but this is something that I wish I'd known earlier on before I had the machines to kind of automatically do the harvest and automatically do the growing for me. Number three. So automating lava is something that gave me, you know, headaches when I first tried to figure it out in Sky Factory 4. Sky Factory 3 was very, very straightforward when it came to automating lava. Sky Factory 4 was a little bit of a headache. And uh, I spent, you know, a, a stream one night, just, I think it was the whole stream we spent trying to automate lava because it is a super, super important resource uh, in any of your, you know, you know Sky Factory worlds uh, where you're going to need some sort of a renewable source of energy. Energy. So uh, lava is probably the best source of your early game renewable uh, energy source. But uh, we figured out a way to do it on stream using the dropper. Now the dropper worked. Uh, it was ugly. It was complicated and it would spew extra blocks all over the place. Uh, because it, it would, it would be full and it, it just, it wouldn't know what to do with the other blocks, but it would keep kicking them out. So that wasn't really, really good. Uh, then I 
moved up to the automated user. The automated user is not so bad. Uh, you know, you've got your input, you've got your output, you've got your power. So it was very, very, you know, similar to my, what I finally used. But uh, it is a little bit more complicated and it's not the best way uh, of doing it. So the best way, in my opinion, is by using this auto clicker. Now, it was quite a ways into my series before I figured this out. And I really kind of regret <laughs> doing the videos I did uh, early on because a lot of people have trouble with the dropper and I don't blame it. It was not the most efficient one. Um, a lot of people had trouble with the automated user, maybe not quite as many, but the auto clicker is very, very simple to use where it is a little bit more difficult uh, is in the resources required because you do need some polished diorite for it uh, and to make polished diorite you end up needing some nether quartz now nether quartz you can get it fairly early on by making a nether sapling uh, but the drop rate is really, really low on it. Uh, there is a proper quartz sapling, which the uh, higher drop rate, but it is much more complicated to make. Uh, but I, if you are, you know, starting out your world, I highly suggest uh, you aim for uh, getting this diorite. right. You know, save up your quartz, you know, use it for uh, these auto clickers because you will not regret it. Uh, they are much, much simpler to use. So basically the, the basic setup for an automatic uh, auto clicker uh, is you've got your source of cobble. I've got a overflow storage. You don't really need this, but uh, I like having it because I can come and I can grab cobble when I need it. You know, borrow it from it. I also I also use the tier five one. Chances are you're not going to have a tier five one at this point in the game. But uh, this I'm doing this out of creative, so I just pick the tier five one. But you've got your source of cobble. You've got your auto clicker. Now the auto clicker is nice because you can actually speed up the clicks in it. You can control. Uh, you know by Using burning a different amount of energy, you can speed up uh, how much is, you know, kicked into that uh, cauldron, you know, each and every, you know, tick or whatever. So default is speed zero, one click every 500 ticks, zero RF. So that means even if you don't hook it up to a single uh, geothermal generator, you can automate your lava. It's just very, very slow. Uh, but that's not a big, big deal because it is very simple to automate this. Once we've got lava in here, we just need to pump the lava into the geothermal generator and then the energy from the geothermal generator into the auto clicker. So to do that, we basically need one of each type of our extraction cable. These are very simple to make, uh, you know, just the uh, iron nuggets, the, the pressure plates and then droppers. I think it's just pretty much the same for each one. Uh, redstone dropper and a pressure plate and then uh, gold nuggets, pressure plate and a dropper. So not nothing too, too complicated, but we need to take the uh, now. The reason I didn't set this up previously is that it would already be running by the time I got to this video. So it just makes more sense for me to set this up while we're talking about it. Even though this is not really a tutorial video, uh, it just made more sense for this particular one for me not to do it beforehand. So we're going to take the items out of the chest into the auto clicker. <laughs> okay. The <laughs> creative mode, right? Okay. So auto clicker. You got to make sure that little, uh, you can see it down at the bottom there, opening and closing. That little eyelet is pointing into the cobblestone, uh, cobblestone cauldron here. Uh, and then right click. So that is pointing in. You can just double check it by kind of running around. So right click, not left click. Uh, it's now got a full stack of cobblestone in there. And actually, if we go and throw down, you can see it's already making the lava just simply by that, uh, you know, one click every 500 ticks. And this will fill up and then it will stop. It won't kick out any extra lava. Uh, you won't have blocks lying around, which is good. You can see there it just went up right there. Uh, next up, we need to take the fluid lava into the simple geothermal generator. So we'll use that cable there. And I just realized I'm going to need a extra power cable to get over. Just the way this is configured, I, I was not thinking I needed extra power than what I got. But this geothermal generator is now taking in lava and you know generating energy which is perfect we can now take the energy extraction cable place it over there and now we just need a so we just need a energy cable which i just you know creatively pulled out of my pocket and we're going to make that final connection there and we now have power to our auto clicker now this means we can now speed this up the amount of power that this simple geothermal generator is generating is not going to be enough to go all the way up to eight you're going to need an upgradable geothermal generator to get that close to it but for now we can go at probably three maybe four uh we'll do it but this is going to really really speed up uh how much lava is kicked into here 
here, which is going to speed up how much power that you've got. So uh, as soon as we go in here, what is that? That is uh, one click every 50 ticks. Let's actually go up to four. You can hear it's going quite a bit quicker. So uh, play around with that, you know, until you get your fine balance. But that is going to be how you're going to automate your lava. And then once this is full of lava, you're going to have extra lava that you can feed into your uh, melters and your, you know, smell trees and stuff like that. So that is really, really good. Number four. Okay, so the fifth thing that I wish I had known earlier on in my Sky Factory 4 uh, playtime is going to be about the mulches. Now, mulches are really, really good, and they can really, really increase the output in your hopping bonsais, but they are very, very expensive. So if we hop in here and we go type in mulch... You can see there are seven different mulches up top. The best one being that blue mulch that I used a little bit earlier on. That's like a thousand times growth rate and 350% drop rate. This is super, super hard to get. And in fact, all of these last six require some sort of machine uh, to get to them, but they are leveled up. So one brown mulch, mulch will make two yellow mulch, will make four amber mulch, which will make, you know, eight ruby mulch, uh, will make uh, 60, I, I don't know, it, it, it scales up as you go. Uh, so really, you can start with one and get all the way to the end uh, with like quite a few of them, but it, it requires an awful lot of machines to do that. The exception is the brown mulch. Now, the brown mulch gives you a 40% increase in growth rate and drop chance. So that is not something to like kind of, you know, sniff at. Like this is a pretty good increase uh, for a very, very simple recipe. So you can see it is basically a brown dye. The simplest of that is to get is the cocoa beans. So uh, cocoa beans are simply, you know, gathered from the jungle sapling. And you, if you've been playing this for a little while, you've had to make a jungle sapling. Uh, you'll need it for all three of our food saplings and then you also need it for the cottonwood sapling so that means that you know, it's something that you're going to have in your inventory really quick you run it through a hopping bonsai there is a 30 percent chance you're going to get cocoa beans so cocoa beans are very very cheap and then to make the brown mulch it is simply cocoa beans and four sticks like you can't get much simpler than that and that ends up getting you two which is really really good and you know what so i've set up a little bit of a demo here so here's the brown mulch here is regular dirt and we've got two dirt saplings if we go one two and you can see i've got you know the filing cabinet oh one second here what happened to the files in here okay they are in there okay it just wasn't coming up i was getting worried there for a second uh it wasn't displaying it properly that is really really weird but you can see the growth on the uh the the brown mulch is already noticeably uh, faster than uh, the, uh, the 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 regular dirt mulch. Uh, dirt mulch, regular dirt. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit in here. We'll we'll just do one minute, one minute, and uh, we'll just see what the difference is between the two mulches. So that was a minute. It was not very, very long, uh, but I got lucky because it actually rolled over just as I started looking at that clock there. So that was perfect. So uh, the regular dirt in that time, uh, two, three, five, five, and one. So that is, you know, that's what you would expect. That is a hundred percent growth rate on the saplings. Uh, brown mulch, we're already like three times on some of these, at least double on most of these things here. So like that is a really, really good increase. And this, this works while you're, you know, going around in your world, doing your different things. So again, highly recommend you skip up to brown mulch as soon as possible. The other mulches are, you know, a little bit more difficult, uh, but brown mulch is, mulch is so simple that as soon as you get that jungle sapling and you start getting some of those um, cocoa beans, you, you got to switch up to this mulch. This is going to be, it's going to help you get your resources way, way quicker than, you know, your standard dirt. Number five. 
Okay, guys, so I am back in my uh, regular uh, tutorial world. I haven't actually been here for quite a while. Uh, I've kind of switched over to MC Eternal for a bit, but uh, the whole reason this video kind of got sparked is that somebody may have solved my problem with the 1 million items in the file folder cabinet. Now, this is a uh, advancement book quest. It is on the age of all of the things, OMG, LOL, uh, just in the top corner here, going on your permanent record which is to fill any real file cabinet with a folder that contains at least 1 million items of any type, then right click it. Now, we did this for my 50th episode and it did not work. Okay guys, so we are so, so close here. 998,000 sticks in our storage. Uh, four hours and 50 minutes, uh, give or take a little bit. So uh, let's go, 9,000, oh, okay, st stay on. Come on, come on, there we go. One million sticks with the right, no, no. What do we what do we do again do we click on the file folder maybe uh one second here one million sticks we got that right maybe it's not exact maybe it's rounding up one second here okay well we're over top of it now so we should be able to right click Um, so that was very, very, uh, you know, frustrating. And, you know, a, a lot of other people had this problem. I had, up until very recently, uh, everybody has told me, you know, everybody that has commented on it and says, yeah, they've got that problem too. Nobody's ever told me that they've got it. That is until just very recently when I got a comment from Tex Animex that, uh, what we need to do is we need to have this in our inventory when we right click it. Now, I don't remember trying that when we, uh, when I first did that video. So, Let's give it a shot. Now, I've taken all of those sticks and I've put them into the uh, black hole controller here for that uh, quest. Um, so I've basically, I've just reversed a bunch of stuff. We've now got 1 million sticks in this filing cabinet. Uh, let's break it. We're going to pick it up. Okay, it's in our inventory. I'm right clicking it with my hand. Okay, guys, so here's attempt number two. Um, I kind of thought about this the first time around, episode 50, when we did the uh, the actual attempt to do this, um, that maybe sticks don't count. So I had no way to really test it at that point. Uh, but because we were trying to fill this black hole controller with the, the sticks this time, like we've got over 16 million sticks total. Uh, I think once we put the, the, the million that we got in there back in here, uh, we needed a whole bunch and it was slowly working away at it. Maybe we can get away with something like uh, planks. So I had a, almost a million planks as it was ready to be turned into sticks and sort of in the process of being turned into sticks. So who knows? So I, I went and I transferred them all over to this filing cabinet. It took a really, really long time. Uh, even though I've got all of these uh, item transfer level or uh, transfer uh, buses. Uh, actually, that's the only one that all the other ones are, are maxed out with the um, capacity and the speed stuff. So even with that it took a really really long time but uh let's try right clicking closing it we'll try breaking it oh it's taking a long time there we go it's in our inventory right click nothing's happening right click it here shift shift right click right okay, try the file Yeah, there's something that I am missing here, so... Oh! No, 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 no! <laughs> no! Oh! <laughs> okay. All right, well, that's not going to work anymore. So, uh... So, I guess this is going to end off... Oh, let's go flip this back. 
So I guess this is going to end off as being a uh, another thing that I wish I had known at the beginning is that the uh, million things in the file folder is broken and it is still broken for us. So that is that is good. That is the takeaway from this one here is that, yes, it was broken before and yes, it is still broken again. Um, I'm hoping like if you guys attempt it, it does seem possible people have been able to get it something for whatever reason it's not working in mine and other people are having that problem as well but uh if you have any other hints on how to get this let me know uh we will you know do our best to you know try to test it out but uh that's gonna be it for this one though guys let me know in the comments below if there's anything out there that you know you wish you had known earlier on in sky factory 4 I i'd really be interested to hear uh you know some of the stuff that came like way too late for it to be useful or you know it was just like a head slap moment moment where you're like oh i wish i'd known that one but uh if you enjoyed this video please think about leaving a like and a subscribe uh, you can follow me on twitter at jekyll wolf also check out the description below there'll be a link to my discord page i would love it if you guys stop by to say hi as well there'll be a link to my patreon page if you enjoy this channel if you enjoy this content and want to support stop by check it out uh there are a lot of great perks out there for all of my supporters uh one of which is the patreon only uh you know minecraft server uh right now we are running uh an mc eternal light uh, on that uh, so if something like that interests you stop by my patreon page check it out but that is it I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.